Hi everyone! In today's video, I'd like to look at two things. First is installing Docker using IPv6, and then the second thing is broadcasting routes to that Docker uh, network for all my sites to use. This is actually continuing on from an earlier video where I had three separate sites and dynamic routing between them using OSPF in PFSense. So effectively, I've got uh, these three sites and a Docker host running Alpine Linux. And within that, I'm going to create um, a network for each site. So the sites themselves um, are of this format, and they have uh, a site code in them, like A, B, and C. And then the Docker network will be, say, like A0, uh, B0, and C0, etc. So the first thing I need to do is install OpenSSH on the uh, Arch Linux box that I'm using to manage all this. And then we'll SSH from the Arch box to the Alpine Linux host. And then I need to install Docker. I'll add my normal account to the Docker group so that I don't need to run all the containers as root. have docker start at boot. And then I'm going to log out. And the reason I'm doing that is just so I can get that uh, group membership back on my regular account. OK, let's test a basic docker container. So. Currently, the only IP address, as we expect, is an IPv4 address. Um, there's no IPv6 anywhere uh, yet. To enable IPv6, uh, we just need to edit one file. It is etc docker uh, daemon.json. And this is actually, I pulled this right off of the um, the website. Um, I think the, there's a wiki. I'll link to it in the description. Okay, so this basically just flips on IPv6 and then assigns a particular network. Um, I know there is some minimum size. I, I can't remember exactly what it is, maybe 72. Um, but in any case, using a 64 just makes this whole thing a lot easier to deal with. And restart Docker. Great, so now if I use the exact same Docker command and we look at IP addresses, you'll see that we have both an IPv4 address and an IPv6 address. And this is actually within the a0 slash 64. Now you'll notice that the IPv6 address here is actually just based off of the MAC address. So if we wanted to set a particular IPv6 address, because we're not going to be doing NAT here, NAT being very passe anyway, um, there is a switch that you can pass that is IP6. Let's say that we wanted to give it the address of just two like that. And if you do that, you'll see that it had absolutely no effect. <laughs> and you got the exact same address as before, the same ad address too. Um, apparently, from the little reading I did, this is due to us uh, using the default network. Um, there is a workaround, which is just to change the MAC address. four, five, six. So um, if I set the MAC address to two, 
then the IP address will also be just two. So that's one way to work around that particular problem. Okay, so that's basically the first uh, half of this done. And then the other thing uh, that needs to be done is to broadcast this route to the other sites. Um, because we right now, none of the other sites have any idea that uh, this network exists. In fact, even the local router for this site doesn't know about this network yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got this alias called LAN nets. And basically this is just a list of all the networks that might be attached to the LAN. And I use this in various rules on the LAN interface as a source rather than using LAN net because LAN net might not encompass all of the things that are in the LAN. It, it could be that we have other networks like this one that we're about to add. And so that's why I've done this uh, alias. Okay, so add the A0 network, and this is going to be site A docker. And apply that. Okay, the first step to uh, doing routing for this is to create a gateway. It's really important to choose the correct interface. I've watched that before. Um, the gateway name, we'll call this Docker A. Now, the gateway IP address could be um, one of two things. We'll go back um, out of the container and into the uh, Docker host. It could be uh, this static address. Um, it could also be uh, this address. Um, which is basically the the MAC address based address, the, the one that doesn't change. Um, it could also be this link local address. And that's actually what I'm going to use for the gateway because uh, this will indicate, at least to me, that it, it doesn't leave the local LAN segment. And because there's a link local address, I am actually going to put the uh, scope, um, which is the interface uh, that it's using. I know that it's up here as well. Um, you can always check which interface um, to use through the interface assignments uh, UI here. Okay, we'll add a description. Great. Now, when you add a gateway, I think it's very important to check whether the gateway is actually reachable. And the way that I like to do that is to add a widget to the dashboard. And then you'll see all of the gateways that you have and whether they're reachable or not. Okay, so this is good. This one is actually reachable. Doing this, just adding the gateway, doesn't advertise this network to any other uh, sites. So it, it only makes um, an entry in the gateways table. There's two ways that I know of to advertise that uh, a route to the other sites. One way is to use pfSense's uh, static routes. So we can create a static route for the A0 network. And we'll say that that is in the Docker A gateway. and we'll apply that. So this does not yet advertise the route to the other sites. However, it, it will let this router talk to the uh, Docker host. To do that advertisement, if we look at status and FRR, which is where the OSPF status is, we can see that there is a route here for that uh, Docker network. And it is a K code, which means that it's a kernel route. So if we uh, advertise kernel routes to the other routers, 
then that will advertise this route. So to do that, we go to the OSPF uh, six settings tab, and we say um, redistribute pfSense kernel. So this will redistribute those K class routes to the other routers. Okay, so we'll save that. And then if we go to one of the other sites, this is site B. And look at the FRR status. We should see, oops, we should see a route here Yes, perfect. So there's an OSPF route for the A0 network. And you can see that it's using the actual same router address as the A network, which is what we expect. So at this point, theoretically, we could ping the uh, a container if it were up and running. So we'll restart our container. And I've used the MAC address trick, so it should be at address two. Great. So this is um, from the arch box on this machine to the container in uh, site A's Docker. So we could do the same in site B, but I'll do this a slightly different way. Um, let me get the gateway set up first, and then we'll come back and look at uh, the slightly different way. Okay, so the gateway was created successfully for um, site B's Docker. So instead of using the uh, PFSense static routes, another option is to use the FRR static routes. And so if you go to the uh, FRR global settings, you can actually just drop uh, a network in here. and you can specify the gateway that you just created. And just save. Now if we look at the status, we'll see that there is an S type route here, and that is the one that we've just added in the uh, static routes. Now to distribute that, we have to go back to the OSPF6 settings, and we can check this box. Um, previously, we had used this PFSense kernel one, but instead we could redistribute this uh, static route. And when we save that, um, now site A should be able to see site B. Yeah, so there's B0 there. Great. And if we uh, look at the routes table, the PFSense routing table, we'll see that both of those sites um, are available now A and B Docker networks. So we should be able to now ping from uh, the Docker container actually in A to a Docker container in B or vice versa. So um, yeah, so this is the Docker um, B side container pinging in the A side container. So this is great. And we could keep going and add site C uh, for completeness and be able to 
trace between them. In fact, we should be able to now do a trace route. Yeah, and so we can see that it passes through um, the local site B Docker host and then the Docker uh, router. Now, it looks like it's actually not happy with that um, because I have typed the address wrong. <laughs> there. <laughs> if you type the address right, it tends to work better. So, yeah, so that's uh, the video. Again, the advantage of doing this is that as you add sites, you only need to make configuration changes to that site itself, and the other sites will automatically be able to pick up and use this routing information that is being provided. That's it. Thanks for watching.